Chapter One of the Adventures of Mabel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by April 6090, California, United States of America. The Adventures of Mabel by Harry Peck. Chapter One. One. The Green Lizard. Once upon a time there was a little girl named Mabel, who lived in a cottage with her grandma, and her brother Walter, and Jane, the cook. The cottage was not very near any other houses, but was way out beyond the village and near a large wood. The wood was very big, and the trees in it were great tall trees, all covered with leaves, and having thick vines around them, so that even in the middle of the day it was shady and cool. And when the sun began to go down, it was so dark that you could hardly see mabel loved the big woods because when the sun was hot she could go under the trees and play on the moss in the shade of the branches and there was a lovely little brook there with real fishes in it and sometimes mabel would go in wading and the little fishes would swim around her feet and make believe bite them but they didn't really bite because they were such little fishes and hadn't any teeth and ever so far down in the woods where it was very shady mabel used to find strawberries growing in blackberries and little red checkerberries all under the green leaves one day late in the afternoon when the sun grew very hot mabel was tired of playing with her dolls so she got a little basket and said to grandma grandma may i go down in the woods and see if i can pick some strawberries for supper it's pretty late said grandma but you can go if you won't wander too far away and be out after dark you know mabel there are animals in the woods that might hurt you and they come out from their caves as soon as it begins to grow dark oh i'm not afraid of animals and i won't be late said mabel i'll pick you a basket full of strawberries and then i'll come straight home so off she went with her little sunbonnet on her head and with her basket on her arm down into the big shady woods when she reached them she strolled along under the trees over the beautiful soft moss where the shadows made it nice and cool and where the birds perched under the thick leaves and sang when they saw her coming for they all remembered mabel and liked to see her playing around in the woods pretty soon she looked for the place where the strawberries were and she picked and picked and went further and further into the bushes until she had gone a long way and had filled her little basket nearly full of ripe red berries and as she picked the sun sank down behind the hills and the evening began to come on and the little frogs in the brook came out of their holes and peeped gracious said mabel all of a sudden it's getting late i must go home straight off but just as she had picked up her basket and was looking for her sunbonnet on the ground she heard a queer little sound like the squeak of a mouse what's that said mabel and she looked all around her to see where it was but there was nothing that she could find only the same queer little squeak kept on as though someone who was hurt and was crying with pain mabel looked up into the trees and peered around in the grass and looked among the bushes but she couldn't find out where it was well she said that's funny and she stooped down to pick up her sunbonnet when all of a sudden right at her feet she saw that it, what it was that was making the noise there down in the moss was a little bit of a lizard about as long as mabel's finger it was bright green and had a little yellow spot on its head like a gold crown and when it saw mabel looking down it squeaked again as loud as it could dear me said mabel what's the matter little lizard don't you feel well and then she saw what the trouble was a big stone had fallen on the end of the lizard's tail and held it down so tight that the lizard couldn't get away why you poor little lizard cried mabel here i'll help you so she took both her plump little hands and gave the stone a big push and away it went off the lizard's tail the lizard jumped up and whisked his tail around and felt of it to see if it was broken when he found that the tail was all right he climbed up on the stone and looked up into mabel's face you're a good girl said the lizard he had a pleasant voice and a very good-looking face only his nose was rather long why i didn't know that lizards could talk said mabel i can said the lizard i am the king of all the lizards don't you see my crown and he pointed with one foot to the little yellow spot on the top of his head i can talk and i can do other things and i'm going to do something for you because you were so good to me 
and because you rolled the stone off my tail oh said mabel politely you're quite welcome i hope your tail isn't hurt not a bit said the lizard and see here i'm going to do something for you that i wouldn't do for any other little girl i'm going to make you so that you can understand animal talk and so that all the animals will understand you when you talk and besides i'm going to teach you how to make all animals good to you how's that asked mabel this way just listen and the lizard puffed out his cheeks and began to whistle a little call it was like this <whistles> now said he you do it after me so mabel puckered up her lips and tried to whistle the call but she had never learned how to whistle and so she only made a funny little wheeze that made the lizard laugh so that he nearly fell off the stone try again said the lizard after he had got his face straight once more so mabel tried again and again she made more little wheezes and she puffed and blew until she was nearly out of breath and by and by she did make a noise that sounded something like the call good said the lizard that's the way try some more so mabel tried some more and pretty soon she could really do it quite well now said the lizard if you want any animal to be your friend just whistle that way to him that's the call of all the animals be careful and don't forget it good evening and before mabel knew what he was doing the lizard had jumped off the stone and darted down into a hole in the ground well said mabel that's the funniest thing i ever heard of a lizard talking and teaching me to whistle but dear me how late it's getting i must hurry home as fast as i can it really was growing very late the sun had gone away from the sky and the woods were so dark that mabel could hardly see where she was going all the little birds had gone into their nests and the butterflies were safe at home it was very still except for the tree toads and the frogs in the brook peeping mournfully and every little while mabel could hear strange rustlings in the leaves she tried to remember the way home but the woods looked so different now that she couldn't think which way to go she began to be frightened and all of a sudden way off in the distance she heard a long howl what's that said mabel oh i'm so frightened in a minute or two she heard the howl again oh a long wild cry she knew it must be some animal and she remembered what her grandma had said again and again she heard it and she knew that it was coming nearer she began to run but the poor little thing had quite lost her way and she was really getting further and further into the woods it was so dark that she stumbled over the bushes and the roots of the trees and twice she fell down nearer and nearer came the strange howl and before long she could hear something moving through the bushes she was now in an open place where it was a little lighter and as she looked back all of a sudden she saw a great wolf pushing through the underbrush and coming straight at her he was twice as big as the biggest dog and his long red tongue was hanging out of his mouth between his teeth mabel thought of grandma and walter and how they would never know what had become of her and then she remembered what the lizard had told her the wolf was almost touching her and she was frightened to death but she made up her mind to try to whistle the call round she turned and looked right in the wolf's face she could feel his breath her lips trembled but she gave the whistle ow said the great wolf and he stopped as quick as a wink mabel whistled again the wolf put his tongue in his mouth and hung his head down then mabel saw that his face looked very pleasant and she wasn't afraid any more after all he was just like a big dog wolf said mabel i want you to be my friend all right said the wolf he had a big growling voice and he spoke in wolf talk but mabel could understand what he said i've lost my way wolf said she please show me the way home i live at grandma's i know said the wolf i've seen you playing around in the daytime put your hand on my neck and i'll show you the way so mabel put her hand on the wolf's neck and they went along together his fur was very soft and long and mabel rested her hand on it as she walked for she was very tired on they went through the woods the wolf was not much of a talker and 
Mabel could not think of anything to say, so they kept very still. At last they got to the edge of the woods. There, said the wolf, pointing with his big paw, and Mabel could see through the dark her home with a bright light shining from the window. Goodbye, wolf, said Mabel. Thank you very much. I knew you were a good wolf and wouldn't ever hurt little girls, would you? No, said the wolf in a rather queer voice, and Mabel thought he looked rather sheepish, and that he hung his head rather low. Well, good night, said she, and she put her arms round his big furry neck and gave him a hug. Oh, said the wolf, and he licked her hands with his rough tongue, and then trotted back into the dark woods. Mabel's grandma was standing on the veranda. She was dreadfully worried because Mabel was so late. Mabel! Mabel! She called as she looked out into the dark. Yes, Grandma, said Mabel, and Grandma just rushed down the steps when she heard the little voice, and gave Mabel a whole lot of kisses, for she had been afraid that her little girl would never come back home again. After Mabel had had a fine supper in her high chair in the cozy dining room, and when Grandma had undressed her and was putting her to bed, she said, Oh, Grandma, I left my strawberries in the woods. Never mind, Mabel, said Grandma. We can go together tomorrow and get them. But now I want to tell you how frightened I was to have you out so late. Don't you remember I told you there were animals in the woods? Well, this afternoon, your Uncle Robert was here, and he said that only yesterday, when he was going along the path, he saw something in the bushes that looked like a wolf. Think of that. Oh, said Mabel. I don't believe a wolf would hurt a little girl, do you, Grandma? What, a wolf? Mabel, a wolf is the worst animal in the world. If you had met up with a wolf, he would have eaten you all up, every bit of you. Mabel didn't say anything, but she laughed a little to herself, and then turned over in her crib, and curled up on her soft white pillow and went fast asleep. End of chapter 1「Chapter Two of the Adventures of Mabel by Harry Peck. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Two: The Taming of Rex. The next morning, Mabel came down late to breakfast. She remembered what happened the day before, but it seemed to her like a dream, and she could scarcely believe that she had really seen the talking lizard and the good old wolf. But she remembered the call, and before she got out of bed, she whistled it over two or three times very softly to herself. While she was eating her bowl of oatmeal and an egg, Grandma, who had finished her own breakfast, said, Mabel, did you hear your Uncle Robert come in last night after you had gone to bed? No, Grandma. Was he here? Yes. He spent the whole evening with me and told me about a horse that he's bought. He's having ever so much trouble with it. Why? What's the matter, Grandma? Oh, it's such a strange horse. Uncle Robert bought him yesterday because he was such a beauty, a great splendid black animal. But now they have found that no one can ride him. When anyone goes up to put on his bridle, he starts up on his hind legs and kicks and rears and then runs across the meadow. Uncle Robert thinks that he'll have to sell him again or else give him away. Oh, that would be a pity, wouldn't it, Grandma? I do love horses so. May I go down to Uncle Robert's and see him, please? Yes, after breakfast. Only don't stay very long, and don't go too near the horse, because he might kick you. So after Mabel had finished her egg, she slipped down from her high chair and got Grandma to put on her little coat and her straw hat, and off she went down the road. Uncle Roberts's house was about half a mile away, and when Mabel came near, she saw him walking up and down the front yard, talking to John, the man. Hello, Mabel, said Uncle Robert when he saw her. "'Going to make me a visit?' "'Yes, Uncle Robert,' said Mabel. "'Grandma said I might come down and see the new horse.' "'Oh,' said Uncle Robert. "'So she told you about the horse, did she?' "'Well, he's an awful bother to me. "'John and I were just going out to the meadow to try him again "'to see if we can't put a bridle on him and make him mind. "'You know, yesterday he wouldn't let us go near him. "'Come now, let's take a look at him.' "'So John got the bridle, and they all walked down to the meadow.' back of the barn, Mabel following along behind, trying to keep up with her short little legs. There in the middle of the meadow was a great big black horse quietly eating grass and, 
swishing his tail around to keep off the flies. He was a splendid-looking horse, with a long black mane and a glossy coat that shone in the sunlight as though it had been polished with a blacking brush. When he saw that someone was coming into the field, he cocked his head a little to one side and sniffed, but kept right on biting at the clover. "'Oh, isn't he a beauty?' cried Mabel. "'What's his name?' "'The man who sold him to me said his name was Rex,' answered Uncle Robert. "'And he is a beauty to look at. Only he's got an awfully bad temper. I wonder if he's any quieter today. Here, John, give me the bridle and I'll tackle him first. So Uncle Robert took the bridle and walked very, very slowly into the meadow. Rex didn't stir, but kept on quietly eating. Nearer and nearer and nearer came Uncle Robert, creeping along as softly as he could. I guess he'll get him this time, said John to Mabel. Uncle Robert was now almost up to Rex's head. He spread out the bridle and took the bit in his right hand and made one more move forward. In half a jiffy, he would have had the reins over the horse's neck when, bang! All of a sudden, just like lightning, up went Rex's head. He snorted a tremendous snort and stood straight up on his hind legs. Then he gave a terrific jump into the air, kicked out his heels, and tore away through the grass, plunging and cavorting like a crazy horse. Paw, said John. He's just as bad as ever. Uncle Robert tried again and again, but Rex wouldn't let him come anywhere near him. He kicked and pranced and galloped about the field, until at last Uncle Robert gave it up and came back to where Mabel and John were standing. His hat had blown off, and he was puffing and panting, and his face was as red as a beet. He took out his handkerchief and wiped his forehead. The ugly beast, he said. What did I ever buy him for? He makes me so mad I could shoot him. Let me try him, sir, said John. Perhaps he's tired of running now. Then John took the bridle out of Uncle Robert's hand and started out in his turn. Rex had stopped running and was eating clover again, as quietly as you please. He cocked his head as John crept up, but didn't budge an inch. Whoa, said John, as quietly as he could. Whoa, old horse, whoa. Rex kept very still. John was now at his head and was just about to slip the bridle on when, bang, up went Rex in the air again. Slash went his heels, straight out as he turned. His hoofs, with their iron shoes, flew within an inch of John's ear. If they had struck him, they would have knocked his head clean off. Ow! Ow! cried John, frightened half to death. If he'd kicked me, I'd have been a dead man. Then he hurried back to where Uncle Robert and Mabel stood, while Rex went galloping around the meadow again, snorting like mad. "'Isn't that the worst beast you ever saw?' cried Uncle Robert, who was dreadfully vexed. "'I'd sell him or give him away this very afternoon.' Mabel kept very still for a moment. Then she looked up into Uncle Robert's face and said in her soft little voice, "'Uncle Robert, will you let me try to put his bridle on?' Uncle Robert stared at her till his eyes nearly popped out of his head. He was too surprised to speak at first, and then he began to laugh. "'Ha ha!' he said. What, you try to put a bridle on him? Ha ha, that's a good joke. Ho ho, roared John. Well, that's the best I ever heard. May I, Uncle Robert? said Mabel. Why, Mabel, said he, it's perfect nonsense for a little girl like you to think of such a thing. The idea of your managing a big, ugly horse. Sure, said John. You're only a little baby yet, and the horse that eat you up or kick you away across the lot. Well said mabel i couldn't do any worse than you did anyhow mabel was angry she didn't like to be called a baby when she was nearly six years old then she turned to uncle robert and said please please let me try uncle robert laughed again well mabel he said he'll just run away when you go near him so it won't do any particular harm but you're a silly little girl to think that you can do what john and i couldn't why, you're so small you'll make the horse laugh to see you coming up to him with a bridle. Never mind, said Mabel stoutly. I'd like to see a horse laugh. If I can't put his bridle on him, I'll come back again. So she swung the bridle over her little arm and started out through the clover. She was so small that the clover blossoms came up almost to her neck, and her fluffs of yellow hair touched them as she walked along. It was a pretty picture that she made moving through the thick green grass and perhaps this was why rex stopped munching clover long before she came near him and began looking at the little figure that was marching straight toward him 
as he stood with his head high up in the air perhaps though he thought that he could frighten her when he saw how small she was for he pawed the ground and snuffed the air and shook his mane at her and when she came near him he began to lash his tail as though he were very fierce but mabel looked up at him and held out her hand and as he lifted his hoofs she whistled the lizard's call <whistles> rex stopped as though he had been shot he pricked up his ears and looked at her very hard then mabel whistled the call once more good old horsey she said to him you won't run away from me and be a bad horse will you then she whistled the call for the third time rex put his head down low and gave a long soft whinny come here rex said mabel and the big horse walked quietly up to her and rubbed his nose on her cheek whinnying gently all the time as if he had been only a little colt uncle robert and john couldn't believe their eyes they were too far away to hear her whistle the call so they just stood there and wondered how on earth mabel was making friends with the horse open your mouth rex said mabel he opened his mouth and she slipped the bit in between his teeth then she drew the bridle over his ears and fastened the strap as she had often seen men do when they harnessed horses now rex said mabel after she had patted his nose and smoothed his neck i want you to come up to the fence so that i can climb up on your back and ride you rex whinnied again and walked slowly up to the high stone wall near by then mabel clambered up on the wall and from the wall she crept upon rex's broad back and took hold of the reins when he felt her sitting on him he stood up in the air on his hind legs but he did it so slowly that mabel didn't mind it for it felt as though she was on a big rocking chair and she held on tight by the reins and rex's mane then when all his four feet were on the ground again she spoke to him once more and he started off with her across the meadow to the place where uncle robert and john were standing as soon as he got there he stopped and stood beside them perfectly still with mabel laughing on his back oh mabel mabel cried uncle robert whose eyes were as big as saucers how in the world did you manage to do it why it's the most wonderful thing i ever saw in my life wonderful wonderful oh i just spoke to him uncle robert and he minded me all right said mabel i think he likes little girls he seems to said uncle robert still wondering am i a little baby now john asked mabel sure miss mabel said john i'll never call you a little baby again you're bigger than the biggest man i ever saw well said mabel after a little while help me down please uncle robert rex is good now and you can ride him all you want to no no answered uncle robert you have done such a wonderful thing with him that i think he ought to belong to you after this so i'm going to give him to you what to keep for my own and own yes said uncle robert and if grandma will let you have him you can keep him for your own horse to ride on always i think you deserve to have him and i'll get you a little girl's saddle and send it down to the house for you oh goody cried mabel and she jumped so with joy she nearly fell off rex's back would you like to be my own horse rex rex gave a loud whinny thank you ever so much uncle robert you are awfully good may i ride him home now this very minute to show grandma of course said uncle robert only hold on tight so mabel spoke to rex and off they went slowly cantering down the road to grandma's grandma was standing in the yard watering her flower beds when all of a sudden she heard a horse's hoofs clattering along the hard road she turned around and looked and then she saw a big black horse coming straight toward her in a cloud of dust her eyes were not very good and at first she did not see that there was any one riding him dear me she said to herself that must be robert's new horse i wonder if he's broken loose and run away but in a minute she noticed something like a little white bundle perched up on his back and a second or two later she saw that it was mabel laughing away as she rode the great horse right through the gateway and over the lawn till she stopped him at grandma's side mabel mabel cried out grandma you on a horse's back why how can you ride like that aren't you afraid of falling off oh no said mabel it's lots of fun and grandma uncle robert has given me rex for my own and own horse to keep as long as i live and please let me have him there's room in the barn for him and i'll feed him every day and take good care of him and oh won't it be lovely dear me dear me said grandma who didn't know what to make of it all i never heard of such a little girl riding a big horse 
Why, Mabel, it's wonderful. That's what Uncle Robert said, answered Mabel. But you will let me, won't you? Why, yes, said Grandma, but I'm so surprised I don't know what to say. Dear, dear. By this time, Mabel had ridden Rex to the barn and climbed down off his back on the chicken coop and led him into an old stall. Then she got a rope for his halter and tied him to the manger. Her, brother Walter, who didn't yet know what it all meant, helped her put straw in the stall for a bed and got a pail of water. Then Mabel pulled a lot of grass for Rex's dinner and got Jane to give her a plate of turnips for him and some salt. And when she heard Grandma tell a man to bring a bag of oats and some hay, she felt that at last she owned a real live horse. But she told no one about the lizard's call, for it was a secret, and she felt that perhaps the lizard wouldn't like to have her tell it. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 of The Adventures of Mabel by Harry Peck This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 3 The Frogs at the Bridge Mabel was very happy with Rex, and every day she took more and more pleasure in him. Each morning she would run out to see him before breakfast, and when he saw her coming, he would neigh and stamp. Then, after she had had her own breakfast, she would go again to the barn to feed him. She always piled his manger full of sweet-smelling hay, and mixed his oats and his meal with her own little hands, and she fed him bundles of rich clover and pieces of apple and bits of fresh green cornstalks. Mabel and Rex were the best of friends. Mabel loved to perch upon the manger and rub his nose and talk to him by the hour, smoothing out his long mane and combing his forelock, and he in turn would put his great head against her face and neigh softly as she petted him. After Rex had eaten his hay and his oats, John from Uncle Robert's would come down and curry him with a curry comb and put Mabel's new saddle on him, and then she would climb up on his back and start out for her morning ride. She almost always rode in the same direction, down the lane past a house where a cross dog lived, then over the bridge that crossed a pretty little brook, then up a hill past a field where there was a mooley cow, and another house where Mabel often saw a kitty cat sitting in the front yard and finally down a long lane that went through the woods till she came out into the open country where a little pig lived, in a small red house. There were other roads that went to the right and to the left of this road, but Mabel did not try any of them, because she did not yet know the way very well, and she was afraid of getting lost. She loved to ride down the lane that went through the woods, for it was so shady when the sun was hot, and all the birds and squirrels and tree toads that lived there knew her, sometimes when she looked down through the long green thickets she could see the good wolf lying among the tangled leaves and she always called out to him and he spoke back to her in a very gruff but good-natured voice when rex first saw the big black wolf head sticking out of the bushes and heard the growl he used to feel frightened and would snort and stamp but after he found out that mabel knew the wolf and that the wolf was very friendly with mabel he left off being afraid and would whinny to the great black creature whenever he saw him. In Mabel's morning rides, she often stopped Rex in the woods, and climbed down from his back to pick berries or lie on the moss under the trees. Rex would always wait for her, so that she did not have to tie him. While she was playing about under the trees, he would nibble the sweet grasses that grew by the roadside, and now and then would put his head over the fence, and neigh in a friendly manner to his little mistress, who always answered him in her cheery little way. Since she had learned to know animal talk, she had come to take a great interest in all kinds of animals, for they no longer seemed strange to her, just like little brothers. And when she talked with them, they could now understand her, so that even the wildest of the squirrels and the shyest of the rabbits in the bushes would come out to meet her and eat out of her hands the nuts and acorns and tender green leaves that she picked for them. When she lay on the moss, they played with her without the slightest fear running and jumping over her head, or nestling down by her face, and taking a long nap beside her. In the brook where the bridge was, there lived a family of frogs. There was the big green papa frog, and a mama frog, and five little baby frogs. They often sat upon stones in the middle of the brook, and croaked to Mabel in their funny little voices as she went by, and she got to know them all very well. One day, all seven of the frogs were out in the middle of the bridge, fast asleep in the sun, when Mabel came riding along. They were right in the way, and Mabel was afraid that if she tried to cross the bridge, Rex might step on some of them and crush them. So she stopped him and cried out to them, 
wake up frogs she said come wake up i want to go by but the frogs didn't hear her and slept straight on mabel called and called again but still they didn't hear at last she rode rex up to the stone fence nearby and slipped down from his back then she walked up to the big green frog and took him by his forefoot come frog she said wake up you'll get stepped on the big frog woke up all of a sudden with a start at the same time all the other frogs woke up they saw someone bending over them and at first thought it was a bad boy who was going to catch them and put them in a bag and sell them to some cook who would cut off their hind legs and fry them so without waiting to see anything more they all gave a big jump and went splash plunk plunge down into the brook as hard as they could go pretty soon however they popped their heads out and there they saw mabel climbing up on her horse again then they knew how good she had been and how she had taken all that trouble to get down and wake them up for fear they should be hurt the big frog swam up to a large flat stone that stood out of the water and as mabel rode by on the bridge he puffed up his cheeks and said in a frog talk and in his croakiest voice thank you thank you all right mr frog said mabel only don't go to sleep on the bridge again or next time someone may come along and walk on you and smash you all into little pieces then she spoke to rex and went galloping away home the next morning it began to rain so that mabel could not take her ride it rained all day harder and harder and when night came it just poured great sheets of water the next day it was just the same rain 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 mabel stayed in the house and played with her dolls and wished that the rain would stop early on the third day she got out of bed and went to the window the rain was over and the sun was shining and everything glittered in the bright light oh goody cried mabel now i can go out on rex again so she went down to the barn the first thing after breakfast and as soon as rex was fed and curried and saddled up she got on his back and cantered out of the yard for a good long ride down the road she went past the cross dog's house down the long hill till at last she came to the bridge over the brook then she saw that the rain had filled the brook full and had swollen it out and made it almost as big as a river the water was high up almost touching the bridge and it rushed along all foamy and swift roaring as it went dear me said mabel why i never saw so much water before in my life just then she noticed that the seven frogs were all out of the water and were squatting across the road in a line just in front of the bridge they reached all the way over to the road so that mabel could not get to the bridge without riding over them good morning frogs said mabel how big your brook is this morning come now please get out of the road so that i can ride over the bridge but the seven frogs never budged but just hitched up their shoulders and blinked come frogs said mabel again very much surprised don't sit there in the way can't you see that rex will step on you if i try to get past but the frogs never stirred and only hitched up their shoulders and blinked again very hard mabel began to be angry with them you stupid frogs cried she come hop away quick i want to go over the bridge then the frogs all puffed out their cheeks and croaked in frog talk no nope, no nope. why frogs what do you mean do you want to spoil my ride aren't you going to let me cross the bridge and the seven frogs all said in frog talk no nope, no nope. mabel was astonished dear me she said i don't know what you want is anything the matter with you they acted so strangely that mabel rode up to the fence and got down off rex and walked up to the frogs when she came near the bridge all the frogs hopped in front of her and held up their forefeet and croaked as hard as they could what don't you want me to go over the bridge she asked is anything the matter with it tell me about it frogs the frogs all hitched up their shoulders and blinked very hard indeed but they did not say anything for frogs cannot talk very much only a few short words mabel went to the side of the road and picked up a big stone as heavy as she could lift she carried it up to the bridge and threw it down on the planks bang no sooner had the stone touched it than crack the whole bridge fell to pieces and went down with a splash into the brook the water swept over it in a minute and carried it away hissing and foaming then mabel saw that the brook had been so swollen by the rain that it had washed away all the posts that held the bridge up 
and that if she had ridden on it she would have broken through and fallen down into the deep water and been drowned the frogs all croaked very loud oh you good little frogs cried mabel you knew that the posts were gone didn't you and wanted to keep me out of danger why you have saved my life the frogs hitched up their shoulders and as they blinked they all laughed together dear dear little frogs cried mabel thank you ever so much for being so good and she stooped down and patted all their seven green heads one after another they all croaked in a satisfied way and then gave a big hop and went splash plunk plunge down into the brook again as hard as ever they could mabel climbed up on rex once more and rode back home on the way she met a man and told him that the bridge had broken down so before long a party of men came and built a new bridge with stone pillars underneath it so strong that the brook could never wash away again End of chapter 3chapter four of the adventures of mabel by harry peck this librivox recording is in the public domain section four the robbers one morning mabel sat eating her breakfast with grandma and walter when she heard a sort of knock at the front door what's that said she the postman oh no said grandma the postman always whistles i don't think it's anything at all but pretty soon another knock was heard, and something began to scratch on the door and whine. "'Let me go and see who it is,' said Mabel, and she jumped down from her high chair and ran to the door. When she opened it, what should she see? But a large black dog standing on the doormat and scratching the door with one paw. He was a dog that looked as though he had been badly treated by someone and had run away. He was very thin, so that his bones stuck out all over him, and his eyes were sunk deep down in his poor bony head. He was all splashed with mud, and his hair was matted close to his body. When he saw Mabel, he crouched down as though he thought she was going to beat him, and whined pitifully. "'What do you want, doggie?' asked Mabel. Her voice was so kind, and she looked so pleasant, that the dog knew that she was not going to hit him, and he wagged his tail feebly and began to lick her hand. "'Poor old dog,' said Mabel. "'You look awfully hungry. "'See, Grandma, here's a dog.' "'Grandma came to the door and looked at him. "'Oh, what a miserable, dirty-looking dog,' she said. "'Come in, Mabel, and shut the door. "'Perhaps he's an ugly dog and he will bite you.' "'Ah, oh, no, he won't,' cried Mabel. "'And, Grandma, let me give him some breakfast. "'I don't think he's a bad-looking dog at all. "'He's only muddy because he's been running along the roads.' You wouldn't bite me, would you, doggie? The dog put his nose up into the air and gave three loud barks, as if to say, No, no, no. There, Grandma, I knew he wouldn't. Come now, let me give him something to eat. So Mabel went to the breakfast table and got a big plate. On it she put three or four chopped bones with plenty of meat on them, a large piece of omelette, some bread, and a bit of buttered toast. Then she carried the plate out to the veranda and set it down beside the dog. Oh, how he wagged his tail and jumped when he saw it. But hungry as he was, he wouldn't touch a scrap of food till he had licked Mabel's hand again, as if to thank her for being so good to him. Then he just rushed at the plate, for he was nearly starved, and ate and ate as hard as he ever could. First he gnawed every bit of meat off the chop bones, then he gobbled the omelette and then the toast. Finally he licked the plate clean and went back to the bones again crunching them all into little pieces between his teeth well you are hungry said mabel i'll give you something more so she brought him out a large bowl of warm milk with some oatmeal in it and she watched him as he lapped it up with his long tongue down to the very last drop while she was standing there grandma came by and looked at him now mabel she said as soon as he has finished drive him away we don't want such a looking dog as that around Oh, but he isn't really so bad-looking, answered Mabel. He's just a little muddy. Grandma went upstairs, and as soon as she was out of sight, Mabel ran into the kitchen and got Jane to give her a large bowl of warm water and a sponge and a cake of soap. Then Mabel sat down beside the dog and dipped the sponge into the water. I'm going to give you a nice bath, doggie, said she, and he wagged his tail and stood very still. First, Mabel soaked the sponge full of warm water and wiped off the mud from the dog's face. 
then she wrung it out and dipped it in the water again and went over his body and his legs going over and over him till every bit of mud was gone then she got a fresh basin of clean water and sponged him all over once more till he was as clean as he could be down to the very tips of his black paws and the end of his tail last of all she brought a big clean towel from the kitchen and rubbed him as dry as a bone there doggy she said proudly when she had finished he looked like a different dog his coat was glossy and smooth and shone in the sunshine and he felt so strong and well after his big breakfast that he no longer kept his head down and his tail drooping on the ground but he held them both high up in the air and his eyes were as bright as jewels just then grandma came down the front stairs and looked out why mabel she cried another dog where did he come from what do you think of him grandma asked mabel while her eyes twinkled with fun oh he's a very good-looking dog said grandma whose dog is he ha ha laughed mabel why grandma it's the same dog that came while we were here at breakfast i've just washed him grandma was tremendously surprised well well said she i shouldn't have known him now grandma said mabel you see he's a good handsome dog so won't you let me keep him you know there's a dog house in the yard by the barn and i can take care of him do say yes grandma for i should dearly love to have a dog of my own what a dog yes please grandma well i don't know that i care only his owner may come for him and then you'll have to give him back oh i don't believe he's got any owner and if he has the owner ought to be ashamed for letting him get so hungry and thin so mabel kept the dog when he found out she was going to let him stay he was wild with joy and frisked and jumped around like mad barking and yelping as loud as he could mabel took him out to the doghouse and put some straw in it for his bed and a large bowl for him to drink out of now she said that's your house and you must be a good dog i'm going to call you towser because i've got a story-book in the house about a dog named towser and i like the name so towser walked into his new house and curled up on the straw and went fast asleep the next morning when mabel took her ride on rex towser ran behind them and the three were good friends at once that same afternoon two men walked slowly by the house where mabel lived one was a very tall dark man with a heavy black beard the other was shorter with a smooth face both of them wore slouch hats that partly covered their faces and high thick boots round their necks they had mufflers of dirty red flannel each carried a long sharp knife in his pocket they were robbers as they walked slowly by the tall robber looked into the yard and saw the stable door open and rex inside eating hay out of the manger ha said the tall robber that's a mighty fine horse i wish i had him well said the short robber why not steal him we can come back here in the dark tonight and get him out of the barn i don't believe they lock the doors nights that's a good idea said the tall robber and maybe they don't lock the house doors either so perhaps we can go in and rob the house then after they had looked very carefully at the barn and at the house they went away to the place where they lived it was a small brown house a good many miles away when they reached it they went inside and waited till the sun sunk down and darkness came on then about midnight they got a dark lantern a bridle a saddle and four large towels and set out through the dark towards mabel's house when they came near it they crouched down by the fence and crept carefully along keeping very still on they went till they came to the garden gate they opened this as quietly as possible and glided into the yard the house was all dark the lights were out and everybody was asleep i wonder if the house is locked whispered the short robber they crept up to the veranda and the tall robber fumbled in the dark till he found the doorknob he turned it and pushed against the door it was locked pa said the robber the short one tried the windows but they were locked too they went noiselessly around to the back of the house and tried the kitchen door and the windows and the cellar door but they were also safely locked say said the tall robber i'm afraid the stable's locked too let's see growled the short robber they made their way silently up to the stable door one of them put his hand on the big wooden latch and pushed it ha ah, said he this ain't locked good they opened the great barn door and went inside when they found themselves safely in the tall robber took the dark lantern out of his pocket and flashed the light around 
there was rex standing in his stall half asleep he opened his eyes when he saw the light and wondered what was going on and who these men were come said the tall robber let's get him out they untied his halter and led him out of the stable upon the soft grass then they took the four thick towels that they had brought and muffled his hoofs up so that he would not make a clatter in going down the driveway next they put on him the bridle and saddle poor rex was still half asleep and had a sort of notion that they were the blacksmith's men who had come after him so he kept quiet and let them do whatever they wanted to finally the tall robber got up into the saddle and took the reins and the short robber climbed up behind him they clicked to rex and he started slowly down the drive to the road the moment they passed out of the gate and got into the road the tall robber hit rex with a piece of rope and away they went at a full gallop they had stolen rex and got away safely now all this time towser had been asleep in his doghouse near the barn but the robbers had moved about very quietly and he had not heard a sound for he was very tired after his long run with mabel and rex in the morning so that he slept like a top but when rex began to gallop down the road the sound of his hoofs even though they were muffled up in the towels startled towser and he sat up in the doghouse and looked sleepily out into the darkness as he did so he got a glimpse of two figures riding swiftly away down the road and finally disappearing then he looked all around and in an instant he saw that the barn door was wide open his eyes nearly jumped out of his head he gave one big growl and ran to the barn and looked in rex was gone oh how badly towser felt then he knew that mabel's horse had been stolen and it made him wild to think he had slept so soundly that he had not waked up and fought the robbers his heart almost stopped beating then he ran as fast as he could to the kitchen door and struck his head against it and scratched and whined and yelped and barked as hard as he could bangity bang he went on the kitchen door scratchity scratch bow wow wow pretty soon mabel stirred in her bed and half awoke she heard the barking and banging and scratching below goodness she said to herself what's the matter with towser bangity bang scratchy scratch bow wow wow dear me said mabel who was now thoroughly awake i'd better go down and see what he wants or he'll wake up grandma and she'll be angry with him so up she got in her little nighty and went pattering down the stairs in her bare feet to the kitchen door she turned the key and opened the door and there was towser barking and yelping like mad what's the matter towser said mabel what do you want for answer towser leaped up and put his paws on her shoulders and then darted off toward the barn then he came back and pawed her again and once more darted off this he did three or four times every time barking as loud as he could mabel was puzzled she could not understand what he wanted why towser she said i think you're going mad just then walter who had also been awakened by the noise came downstairs partly dressed and with a candle in his hand oh walter cried mabel see how strangely towser acts he paws at me and then runs out into the dark and then runs back and paws at me again what do you suppose he wants why it looks as though he wanted you to go somewhere said walter here i'll go with him so walter went out with the candle for the night was very still towser gave three loud barks and ran straight toward the barn walter followed and in a minute he saw that the barn door was wide open he looked in and found that rex was gone he hurried back to the kitchen oh mabel he said rex is gone mabel did not know what to say i think he must have broken out said walter perhaps you forgot to shut the barn door no i didn't said mabel well anyhow said walter i'll go and finish dressing and then go down to the farmer's house and see what he says in a few minutes walter had dressed and with a lantern in his hand he ran down to the road to the farmer's house he knocked at the door and waked up the farmer who dressed himself and followed walter back to the barn by this time grandma had come down and heard about what had happened she dressed mabel and herself and they both came out into the yard the farmer went into the barn and looked all around by the light of walters's lantern huh he said that horse didn't break away because his halter's here and it's been untied then he went outside again and held the lantern down to the ground footprints he said then he looked at the grass and found it all trampled two men have been here he grunted robbers 
the horse has been stolen you'll never see him again why didn't you have a lock for the barn mabel burst into tears her dear rex stolen never to see him again she cried as though her little heart would break it's no use crying said the farmer by this time he's miles away from here well well it's a bad business but there's nothing to do good night and he gave the lantern back to walter and walked off down the road through the darkness to his own house grandma carried mabel up to bed again tried her best to comfort her but the little girl kept sobbing and crying and would not stop oh my poor rex she said they've taken him away and i'll never see him any more and we had such good times together the dear dear thing and now maybe they won't give him enough to eat and perhaps they'll be bad to him so she cried and cried all night long out in the darkness in the yard lay towser thinking about everything that had happened he thought how good mabel had been to him and how she had given him a nice home and then he remembered how he had slept too soundly and had not waked up so that the bad robbers had stolen his little mistress's horse away i'm no good at all he said to himself even a poodle would have done better than i did i ought to be killed and when it was morning again and mabel came down with her eyes all red from crying he felt worse than ever she would not eat any breakfast but went out and sat on the manger just as she used to do when rex was there and her tears fell down her cheek and as she thought how she would never see him again towser's heart nearly broke with grief as he lay on the grass and watched her cry all the morning he lay there with his nose between his paws thinking when mabel went back into the house he still stayed there keeping his eyes fixed on the barn and on the marks of the robbers' feet in the dust oh if he could only do something for mabel presently a thought flashed into his head he noticed the footprints further down the drive and the marks on the grass where the robbers had ridden rex out of the yard he pricked up his ears and sat up on his hind legs he wagged his tail there is something that i can do after all he said then he trotted across to the footprints and began sniffing at them he had a keen nose like all dogs and he sniffed and smelled on the ground for a long time i could find them by the smell thought he in an instant he began following the hoofprints on the grass with his nose close to the ground he didn't stop to think what he would do if he should find the robbers but he started down the lawn to the front gate still sniffing he was very eager his tail was in the air his eyes were big with excitement and as he went out of the gate he gave a big bark one last look behind he gave and saw mabel standing by the window drumming her fingers on the panes and with her eyes still red with tears she took no notice of towser as he went by poor little thing he said to himself i'll do something for you as sure as i'm a dog so out into the road he went sniffing as hard as, he, as ever he could it was a very hot day and the sun shone down like fire it blazed on towser as he went along the open road till he was half melted by the heat the dust flew up into his nose and filled his eyes and when he opened his mouth to pant it blew down his throat and choked him people looked at him curiously as he went nosing his way along and one bad boy threw a big stone at him and hit him in the hind leg so that it made him limp at every step but he kept right on following the trail of rex sometimes he lost it for a few minutes but he always found it again and went on 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 past the house where the cross dog lived over the bridge where the frogs sat on the stones in their brook by the mooly cow's house and the kitty cat's house through the dark woods where the good wolf hunted beyond the little pig's red house on 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 all the afternoon late in the day just as the sun was setting the hoof tracks turned aside from the road and seemed to go into a yard towser stopped and looked up it was a great yard with a high stone fence around it and an iron gate which was half open towser peered in and saw a dark gloomy looking house with its blinds closed tight and great bars on the door rusty red stains were streaked across the steps towser's heart stopped beating he knew that this must be the robbers's home he peeped in between the stone gate posts and wondered where rex was but he did not dare to go in for fear the robbers would kill him pretty soon however he crept around the outside of the fence crouching on the grass until he had gone all the way around to the back of the house still hidden by the fence then he lay down quite worn out he wanted to look over the fence to see what there was in the back yard but he was afraid that the robbers might be there 
before long however he could not hold himself in any more so he stood up on his hind legs and put his forepaws on the top of the fence and peeked very cautiously into the yard then his heart gave a great jump for there under a tall apple tree stood rex the big black horse was tied fast to the limb of the tree by a thick rope and he looked very sad towser was so delighted to see him that he forgot all about the danger and gave a tremendous bark rex turned his head as quick as a flash and there was towser's face looking at him over the top of the wall rex gave a great jump of joy and lashed his tail and whinnied loudly just then the tall robber hurried out of the house he had a red shirt on and a broad leather belt with a big knife stuck in it he looked very ugly for he was scowling horribly what's all this noise he snarled as he went up to rex stop it i say and he struck rex with his hand slap right across the nose i heard a dog too said the tall robber and he began to look all around the yard towser crouched flat on the ground behind the wall and kept as still as a mouse ha said the tall robber i'm sure i heard a dog but after looking all about he could not see towser so at last he went back into the house and shut the door with a bang towser had been frightened half to death so he still lay very quiet behind the wall by this time it was evening and it was growing darker and darker all the while but towser made up his mind not to do anything more till the robbers had gone to bed he was so tired that he wanted to take a nap in the grass but he felt that it would not be safe so he just lay there and listened and waited about nine o'clock the short robber came out and walked around the yard he was not so bad as the tall robber and before he went in towser heard him giving rex a pail of water to drink the robbers locked up their houses soon after but there was a light in the upper windows and towser could see them inside walking back and forth about midnight however the light went out and then he knew that they had gone to bed he sat up on his hind legs now is the time said he and with one big bound he jumped right over the wall into the robbers backyard the moon began to come out from behind a cloud and he saw rex and rex saw him neither made a sound however for fear the robbers should hear them but they rubbed their noses together for a moment and laughed softly to themselves towser put up his mouth and began to feel of the rope by which rex was tied to the tree it was a very thick strong rope and it did not seem as though it could ever be broken in any way but towser put his forepaws up against the slanting trunk of the tree to brace himself and took the rope in his teeth and began to gnaw it as hard as he could he bit and twisted and chewed and gnashed and pulled and snapped his long sharp teeth sank down into the rope and began at last to cut it a little bit finally one of the small strands of the rope gave way towser almost barked with joy but he checked himself just in time and went on biting and gnawing harder than ever little by little the rope began to part first one strand and then another was bitten through until only about a quarter of the thickness was left then all of a sudden rex who had kept very still gave a great pull with all his might and the rope snapped like a paper string rex was free he shook his mane and pawed the ground he was free towser too jumped about him while his heart beat fast with joy he had done something for mabel at last a moment later after he picked the bits of rope out of his teeth with his claws he beckoned to rex to follow and they both went very softly out of the robbers yard walking on the grass so as not to make a noise but the moment they were out in the road towser waved his tail and gave a terrific bark and plunged away toward home as fast as he could go with rex galloping after him like mad it was nearly morning and the sky was beginning to grow pink all around the edges on went rex and towser on 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 over hill and dale through the valley and on the level road till they passed the little pigs's red house and went through the woods where the good wolf hunted by the mooley cow's house and the kitty cat's house over the bridge where the frogs sat on the stones in their brook past the house where the cross dog lived until at last just as the sun was rising they came thundering into mabel's yard all safely home again mabel was lying awake in her crib she had slept very little all night and was so sorrowful that she thought she could never be happy any more all of a sudden she heard a tremendous clattering of hoofs in the yard right under her window why what's that she said she got up slowly and went to the window and looked out rex she gave a scream so loud that everyone in the house heard it 
then she made one big rush for the stairs slid down the banisters like a flash of lightning and flew out into the yard in her bare feet and with nothing on but her nighty oh rex 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 she cried and threw her little arms around his neck he whinnied as loud as he could and put his nose against her cheek and she petted him and cooed over him as though she would never stop by this time grandma and walter and jane the cook had all come down and were looking on in astonishment they could not understand how rex had come back from the robbers poor towser lay on the grass with his tongue out of his mouth and his coat covered with dust but no one noticed him at all or cared anything about him he was tired and hungry and lame and he was the one who had found rex and brought him back from the robbers so he hoped that mabel would speak at least one word to him but he saw that she wasn't thinking of him at all and as he looked up wistfully at her two big tears came into his eyes just then the farmer came by on his way to milk the cows when he saw rex standing in the yard he walked in well 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 he said if there ain't your horse back again how did you get him he came back himself said mabel i don't know how he did it the farmer saw the rope hanging to rex's neck must have broke his rope said he here let's look why this rope ain't broken it's bit looks as though a dog had gnawed it mighty curious thing at that moment he noticed towser lying beside the driveway and all covered with dust hello there's that dog of yours looks as though he'd been on a journey suppose he could have done it everybody turned and looked at towser why he was away all yesterday afternoon said walter and he didn't come back all night mabel ran up to towser tell me towser she said did you go and get rex back towser stood up and wagged his tail and gave a great bark did he rex said mabel rex nodded his head yes and gave a loud whinny oh you dear dog cried mabel as she ran and threw her arms around his neck with a big hug that nearly choked him you good good dog and i never noticed you towser was so glad that he didn't know what to say he just rolled on the grass and then jumped up and down and put his paws on mabel's shoulders and licked her face pretty soon jane brought out a big platter of meat and a bowl of milk for him and he ate and ate as though he had never eaten anything before eat away said mabel after this i am going to love you as much as i do rex and you shall always have everything you want that same day grandma sent for a man who came and put a great iron padlock on the barn door and every evening after that mabel and walter locked it up so tight so that no robbers could get in again to steal End of chapter 4、Chapter、Five of the Adventures of Mabel by Harry Peck. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Five Rex Plays Policeman. About a week after Towser had brought Rex home, Mabel rode out one morning into the town, instead of going along the country roads where she nearly always went. Grandma wanted to send a message by her to the ice man. When she reached the main street, she found great crowds of people there, because a regiment of soldiers was going to march through that morning, and everybody wanted to see them. There were flags in the windows, and the sidewalks were packed with men and women and children, all facing the street. As Mabel rode slowly along, suddenly Rex gave a snort. What's the matter, Rex? asked Mabel, patting him on the neck. But before she knew what he was doing, he had left the middle of the street and was trotting right up to the sidewalk, still snorting. Whoa, Rex, said Mabel. But he would not whoa. Mabel was rather frightened and looked hard at the crowd of people on the edge of the sidewalk to see what there was to make Rex act so strangely. Right at the front of the crowd, she saw two men standing. One was a tall man with a black beard, and the other a short man with a smooth face. Both had mufflers of dirty red flannel about their necks, and they wore big boots. As soon as Rex got near them, he opened his mouth and made a rush at them as if to bite them. Whoa, whoa, Rex! cried Mabel, pulling hard at the reins and trying to stop him. The two men turned very white when they saw Rex, and they tried to run back into the crowd. But the people were packed so closely together that they could scarcely move, and besides, everybody pushed forward to see what was the matter. Rex snorted and neighed fiercely as he snapped at the men, and they dodged and jumped to get away from him. Mabel kept pulling on, 
the reins and calling out to rex when all of a sudden an idea flashed into her little head dear me she said the farmer thought there must have been two robbers who stole rex maybe these are the very ones she was fearfully excited rex she cried are these men the robbers who stole you rex gave a tremendous snort mabel knew that she was right she leaned over and pointed with her riding whip at the men robbers robbers she cried just then two big policemen came running down the middle of the street to see what the matter was they saw a great black horse holding a tall man by the coat and another man struggling to get away through the crowd the policemen rushed up to rex and seized him by the bridle here here little girl they said what's the matter with your horse who let you ride such a dangerous animal the two men struggled frantically to get through the crowd oh policemen cried mabel pointing with her whip there are two robbers catch them quick hurry before they get away she could hardly speak she was so excited the policemen rushed in after the men and seized them by the necks what do you want snorted the tall man turning around this little girl says that you two are robbers said the head policeman we ain't cried the tall man we're good people and we wasn't doing nothing but just standing here peaceable when her old horse tried to bite us you ain't going to arrest us because a horse tried to bite us are you they are robbers cried mabel i know they are they stole my horse a week ago and that's why he tried to bite them just now did you ever see them before asked the policeman no said mabel then how do you know that they are the men who stole the horse because rex that's the horse said so answered mabel the policeman laughed and looked doubtful we can't arrest them because a horse said so said the head policeman just then the other policeman who had been feeling of the short man's coat put his hand down into the pocket of it what's this said the policeman as he pulled out a long knife and an iron tool called a jimmy such as robbers use to break into houses both men turned very pale oh er ah i found this just now in the street said one of them very much confused you did eh said the head policeman well it's unlucky to find things like that i'll have to take you to the judge anyway and see what he says come along little girl so mabel rode along following the policeman who dragged the two men with them by their coat collars pretty soon they reached the courthouse and then four more policemen came out to meet them one of them helped mabel down and said that he would hold rex while mabel went in to where the judge was the judge was a fine-looking old gentleman who sat high up on a kind of throne there were two men at a table in front of him writing and ten policemen stood with their backs against the wall ready to do anything that the judge wanted done the head policeman went up to the judge and told him what mabel had said and showed him the knife and the jimmy the judge looked keenly at the two men and then called mabel up beside him he spoke to her in a very kind gentle voice what's your name little girl he asked mabel well mabel so you think that these men are the ones who stole your horse do you oh yes sir i am sure of it when i asked rex he neighed ever so loud and that meant yes and the farmer said that the footprints in our yard after rex was stolen showed that there were just two robbers then she told him all about the robbery and how towser had brought rex home again the judge smiled that's a curious sort of story said he then he turned to the two men and asked you say you are honest men do you oh yes your honor said they both we are good honest men and live very quietly in our own house where's your house asked the judge and they told him well said the judge to the head policeman you lock these men up for a little while till i can decide what to do when they had been taken away he told mabel to sit down and then he sent four policemen to find the men's house and to do some things that he told them in a whisper so that mabel couldn't hear now he said to mabel you go into my office and wait till the policemen come back i'll have some lunch sent in for you as you must be hungry so mabel sat in the judge's office for two or three hours and a man brought her a glass of milk and a chicken sandwich and two nice long chocolate eclairs that were so good that mabel was glad that she had had to wait after a while the four policemen came back each with a great bag then the judge called mabel into the courtroom and the head policeman brought the two men out of the place where they had been locked up when they came before the judge mabel saw that they had iron handcuffs on their wrists they looked very angry now said the judge 
you say that you are good men do you and not robbers oh yes your honor cried they both we're good honest men and never stolen our lives then the judge motioned to a policeman and he brought the four big bags and emptied them out upon the floor there were gold watches and diamond rings and bracelets and silver forks and spoons and long pieces of lace and strings of pearls and a great many other fine things all of them fell out of the bags in a heap on the floor in front of the judge where did these come from asked the judge from the men's house said one of the policemen we found them in the cellar and some of them are marked with the name of the jeweler who was robbed last week and some of them show the name of a person who was robbed here a month ago now said the judge to the men where did you get these things the men both hung their heads and had nothing to say perhaps you found these two in the road said the head policeman there's something more still sir said one of the other policemen to the judge we questioned the people who live near the robbers's house and they said that a week ago they saw a black horse just like this little girl's is tied to a tree in the back yard all one afternoon it's a clear case said the judge take these men back to the cell and next week they shall be tried and sent to prison then he took mabel up on his knee and patted her head do you know he said that you and your horse have caught two robbers whom all the policemen in the town have been trying to catch for a year and never could do it you are a very wonderful little girl and your horse is a very wonderful horse good-bye now then he put her down and the four policemen went ahead of her to the door while the ten policemen all marched after her they put her on rex's back and as she rode off she waved her whip to them and all fourteen of them stood in line and saluted her with their clubs End of chapter five chapter six of the adventures of mabel by harry peck this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter six walter and the goat when uncle robert gave rex to mabel walter felt rather hurt to think that he had no pet of any kind for his own and after towser came he grew more and more unhappy he was a whole year older than mabel and he was a boy too and it seemed hard that she should have two animals and he none he used to complain about it to grandma and she told him that perhaps he could have a pony when he grew older but this did not satisfy him and sometimes he was very sulky about it one day when both mabel and grandma were out he said to himself that he would have a ride on rex because it wasn't fair that mabel should have the horse all to herself he led rex out of the barn and managed to get the bridle on him and to climb upon his back but the next minute rex made a rush across the yard and the clothesline caught walter under the arms and pulled him off and gave him a bad fall on the ground when grandma came home she found rex eating grass on the lawn and walter crying on the kitchen steps with his legs and arms all black and blue after that he didn't want to try riding rex any more but he made up his mind that he would like some kind of a pet that he would be better able to manage at last when his birthday came he went down to see uncle robert who always gave him a birthday present this time walter decided to ask for what he wanted he found uncle robert sitting on a steamer chair under the big oak tree on the lawn smoking good morning uncle robert said walter it's my birthday today so it is said uncle robert you're getting on in life aren't you what do you think you would like for a present well said walter hesitating a little i've been thinking it over and i've made up my mind that i should like a goat a goat cried uncle robert well well what do you want a goat for oh said walter a goat would be just splendid i could play with him just as mabel does with rex and i could harness him up to a goat wagon and make him carry me all around it would be lots of fun do give me a goat won't you uncle robert ha ha laughed uncle robert why i've got a goat on the place now that you can have if you really want him but i fancy he's a pretty frisky sort of a goat do you think that you can manage him oh yes cried walter just give him to me and see please uncle robert well come on said uncle robert i'll let you have a look at him he's out back of the stable so they walked around to find him walter getting greatly excited sure enough there he was a large black goat with a long beard and two horns that curved back over his head like crullers he was fastened by a rope to a big post 
and was eating the advertisements out of a newspaper when he saw uncle robert and walter coming he cocked his eye at them but said nothing oh cried walter isn't he a splendid big goat just the kind i wanted i'll make him drag me all over everywhere the goat smiled yes said walter i think he's even big enough for me to ride on his back the way mabel does on rex the goat bit a large sapulo advertisement out of the newspaper and laughed very softly all to himself so you like his looks do you walter said uncle robert well then he's your goat that is of course if your grandma says that you can keep him i'll let you take him home with you now and you can ask her about it so uncle robert unfastened the rope from the post and gave the end of it to walter he took it and thanked uncle robert many times he was proud to think that he owned a live goat and he thought to himself what good times he was going to have with him come on goat said he you're going to your new home now come on the goat followed along very quietly with a rope around his neck walter went out into the road and started off towards home with the goat following along meekly behind him walter felt very large and like a man to think that the goat was all his own he held his head up very high and walked along as happy as a king when they got down the road a little way the goat suddenly put down his head and made a rush whack plunk he butted walter right in the middle of the back and knocked him off his feet flat in the dusty road oh oh cried walter i'm killed he was not really hurt but his clothes were all dust and his face was dirty when he got up again the goat was standing quietly by the side of the road eating a large burdock leaf he looked very thoughtful i think it must have been an accident said walter doubtfully perhaps i was walking too slowly and so he ran up against me he picked up the rope again and called to the goat to come on the goat took another bite of the burdock leaf and started along once more very meekly walter walked on a little anxious at first but pretty soon he began to think of how he would astonish grandma and mabel when he reached home just then the goat put his head down and made a second rush whack plunk he struck walter right in the middle of the back again and this time he knocked him away over into the grass by the side of the road walter was thoroughly frightened and began to cry he did not dare to get up but just lay there calling for help uncle robert had been watching the two and when the goat first knocked walter over he had walked down the road and followed him he was now very near though neither the goat nor walter had seen him when walter began crying for help uncle robert ran up he took the rope and with the thick end of it he gave the goat a good whipping the goat bleated with fright and pain there take that you brute cried uncle robert as he gave the goat a last blow across the back if you play any more of your tricks i'll tie you up and whip you with the carriage whip then he picked up walter and comforted him it was a long time before he could persuade him to lead the goat any more but finally he succeeded and the two went on again this time the goat who was very much afraid of uncle robert kept very still and followed walter quietly all the way home like the best goat in the world grandma and mabel were in the front yard when walter led the goat in and told them this was uncle robert's birthday present to him grandma said that walter might keep him and they all went out into the back yard to see where he was to be put walter tied the goat to a clothes post and brought him some turnips to eat tomorrow said grandma i'll have a man come and make a goat house for him and i'll get the harness maker to make a little harness we can buy a goat wagon in the village and then you'll be all ready to drive him around but what's the matter with your clothes walter they're all covered with dust i i i fell down said walter rather sheepishly he was ashamed to say that the goat had butted him all that day the goat stood in the yard as quiet as could be the children gave him his supper at night and some water to drink and when they went to bed he seemed to be quite satisfied with his new home the lights were all put out and the whole family were just getting to sleep when they heard a fearful noise in the yard <laughs> everyone sat up in bed to listen <laughs> oh oh what's the matter cried out walter in a frightened voice from his room i think it's the goat said grandma you'd better put on your clothes and go out and see walter slipped on his trousers and ran down into the yard just as he went out of the door the noise was heard a third time <laughs> 
it was the goat what's the matter asked walter when he reached the place where the goat was tied are you feeling sick the goat said nothing he looked as calm as could be as he stood there in the moonlight there was nothing the matter with him don't do that again said walter you'll keep us all awake the goat said nothing walter went back into the house and got back into bed just as he was getting asleep again the goat began once more <laughs> this time he roared it in a deep voice like a great horn and in a few minutes he repeated it this is fearful said grandma walter go out again and see if you can't stop him so walter went out a second time and talked with the goat who kept very still till walter was gone and then he began again all night long he bleated and bellowed and neither grandma nor mabel nor walter got any sleep at all in the morning they all went out again and argued with the goat and scolded him till he looked as though he was ashamed and then walter gave him some breakfast perhaps he was hungry said walter to-night i'll leave him some food to eat when i go to bed all that day the goat kept very still the harness was not yet ready for him so walter could not make any use of him but just amused himself watching the goat eat and drink at night he left a pile of chopped up vegetables by the side of the clothes post and every one went to bed feeling sure that the goat would be quiet and not disturb them but as soon as the lights were out he began his noise again bleeding and bellowing just as before at last grandma got up and dressed herself and she and walter went out and unfastened the goat and led him down to the orchard further away from the house and fastened him to a peg in the ground after that he kept bleeding but they didn't mind it so much because it didn't seem so loud the next morning the harness maker brought the harness and the goat wagon also came walter was greatly excited now then he said i'm going to have some fun he led the goat into the yard and put his harness on first he put the bridle on the goat's head then he fastened on the straps around the goat's body and finally he hitched the traces to the wagon he took the whip in his hands and got up on the wagon seat and picked up the reins hurrah he cried this is better than a horse just see me drive then he said to the goat get up but the goat didn't stir he just waited and stood perfectly still get up said walter again the goat never budged then walter grew very angry and lifted his whip and struck the goat over the back as hard as he could get up he cried like lightning the goat gave a great jump he put his head down and made one rush across the yard lickety split slam bang over humps and hillocks jouncing the goat wagon so that it nearly upset whoa whoa cried walter frightened half to death but the goat kept on whirling around and around and tearing back again the same way he had come jumpity jump till all of a sudden the wagon struck the clothes post and split in two one wheel went one way and another another the seat flew up and walter was thrown like a cannonball across the yard striking on his face the harness broke and the goat was set free but he still kept dashing about till he had rushed through grandma's flower beds and trampled all her flowers down under his hoofs then he stopped and gave a tremendous bleat ma grandma ran and picked up walter his clothing was torn and covered with dust and his face was cut open so that the blood streamed down his cheeks and smeared them all over red he screamed with fright and pain grandma took him in her arms and carried him into the house she washed his face and put on a big piece of court plaster changed his coat and then got him to lie down on the sofa then she went out and took the goat back into the orchard and tied him once more to the peg in the ground coming back to the house she put on her bonnet i'm going down to uncle roberts's she said to mabel to ask him to come and take the goat back again i never saw such a dreadful animal we haven't had a moment's peace since he came mabel was very serious very well grandma she said but the goat will never be bad again what do you mean mabel asked grandma i'm going to talk to him while you are away said mabel and i promise that when you come back he will be a good goat nonsense mabel said grandma sharply what good is it talking to a goat and such a goat never mind grandma said mabel you wait and see as soon as grandma was out of sight mabel went down into the orchard there was the goat tied to the pig when he saw her coming he cocked one eye impudently and laughed ha! <laughs> ha! 
he said. He was very proud of what he had done. Goat, said Mabel, looking him straight in the face. You have been a very bad goat. We have been good to you and fed you and petted you. And you have done everything you could that was naughty. You have kept us awake all night. And now you have hurt Walter and broken his wagon and trampled down Grandma's flower beds. How can you be so bad? The goat looked very saucy and wrinkled up his nose. Ma, <laughs> he said as loud as he could. Now, goat, said Mabel, if you keep on being naughty, you'll be very sorry. I'm going to stop you from ever doing anything bad again. I will, ma, <laughs> bellowed the goat. Stop, cried Mabel. Don't you bleed again, ma, <laughs> bellowed the goat. All right for you. Now I'm going to punish you, ma, <laughs> bellowed the goat. And he put down his head and tried to butt her. Mabel didn't say another word, but ran back to the house and put on her sunbonnet. Then she went straight down to the woods. When she got there, she looked all around and whistled the lizard's call as loud as she could. The first time she whistled, she got no answer. But when she whistled the second time, she heard a big deep growl away off in the distance, and pretty soon footsteps pattering among the dried leaves on the ground. Then a great black head was thrust out of the bushes and the good wolf came trotting up to her. Do you want me? growled he in his deep, rough voice. Yes, I want you right away, said Mabel. I want you to come with me to my house. No one will see you except a bad goat, and I want you to help me punish him. Can I eat him up? asked the wolf eagerly, beginning to lick his chops. No, said Mabel, not unless I tell you to. I want you to hide in the currant bushes, and when I whistle, run out and pretend you're going to eat him up. Look as fierce as you can, but don't really touch him unless I say so. All right, growled the wolf, but I'd rather eat him anyway. So the wolf went along with Mabel to the house and followed her down near the orchard, where he hid in the currant bushes. Then Mabel walked up to the goat again. Goat, she said, shaking her little finger at him, this is the last time I'm going to ask you to be good. If you don't mind, I'll make you so sorry that you'll never forget it as long as you live. Ma, bellowed the goat, and tried to butt her with his horns. Mabel gave a loud whistle. In half a second, out from the currant bushes, rushed the great black wolf, his hair bristling up all over his body, his eyes blazing like coals of fire, his big mouth wide open, and his long white teeth gleaming. He made a plunge toward the goat. The goat gave one look and then began to scream with terror. His eyes nearly popped out of his head, and the end of his nose turned as white as a sheet. Stop, wolf, cried Mabel, raising her hand. The wolf stopped. His jaws were close to the goat's face, and he gave a roar that made the goat's blood run cold. Now, goat, said Mabel, perhaps you will believe me next time. Here is a wolf who will eat you up in a minute if I tell him to. Do you want to be eaten? No, screamed the goat. Then you've got to promise me to be a good goat hereafter. Are you sorry for being so naughty? Yes bleated the goat. He was shaking like a leaf. Will you promise to let Walter ride you and drive you whenever he wants to? Yes, bleated the goat. Will you promise never to make a sound in the night? Yes, bleated the goat. Then he knelt down and put his head between Mabel's feet and shivered. Well, wolf, said Mabel, you hear what the goat has promised? Now if he breaks his promise, I will send for you again. And the next time, you can eat him up every bit. The wolf gave a terrible growl that made the goat nearly jump out of his skin. All right, said the wolf. Goodbye now, said Mabel. And the wolf turned around and went slowly off through the fields into the woods. When he had gone, the goat looked up and bleated pitifully to Mabel. Just at that moment, Grandma came in at the front yard. Mabel called her. Uncle Robert wasn't home, said Grandma, so we'll have to wait till tomorrow. Never mind, Grandma, said Mabel. You know I told you that the goat would never be bad again. Well, he won't. Just see. Then Mabel untied the goat and got up on his back. Trot, she said to the goat. He trotted quietly around the meadow and came back again to where Grandma was standing. Dear me, dear me, said Grandma. Why, he seems like another goat. Now follow us quietly to the house, said Mabel. The goat followed them. They called Walter down and told him to get on the goat's back. For a long time, he was afraid to do so. But finally, he tried it and let the goat trot around with him. When he told the goat to stop, he stopped. 
and he minded every word that walter said to him now said mabel you get the goat wagon and the harness mended and you'll never have any trouble with the goat again as long as he lives well this is wonderful said grandma what on earth did you do to him while i was away to make him so good oh said mabel smiling a little to herself i just talked to him End of chapter 6chapter seven of the adventures of mabel by harry peck this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter seven the gray rat under the pump in the yard at one side of the house where mabel lived stood a large wooden pump with a long handle it was set upon a sort of platform which was very old so that the sides of it were beginning to crumble away and there was quite a large hole in it one morning just after breakfast mabel was standing at the dining-room window and looking into the yard when all of a sudden she called to walter oh walter she said look here there's a rat coming out of the hole under the pump sure enough there was a rat a large rat with a long tail a sharp pointed nose and whiskers that stood out straight on each side of its face it was a very old rat for its fur had turned gray and it looked very wise mabel and walter watched it poking its head out of the hole under the pump at first very cautiously and then when it saw no one there creeping into the grass it went smelling about until at last it found a bit of apple that lay near by then it gave two funny little squeaks and all of a sudden out from the hole ran two little baby rats they trotted up to the old rat who gave them the bit of apple to eat they poked their little noses into it then nibbled away as hard as they could oh aren't they cunning cried mabel as she watched them they must live under the pump yes said walter and i tell you what i'll do when they go back i'll get jane to give me a pail of hot water to pour down the hole and kill them mabel's eyes grew very big and her face very red what kill the little rats she cried walter how can you be so cruel they don't do us any harm they live out in the yard and only eat what they find in the grass it would be just wicked to hurt them well i'm going to do it all the same said walter they're only rats never mind said mabel you've no rights to be cruel to them even if they are rats so long as they're not doing any harm has he grandma certainly not said grandma and don't let me hear of your touching them walter if you do i shall punish you you seem altogether too ready to hurt any harmless little creatures so that settled that and pretty soon mabel took some pieces of broiled bacon off the breakfast table and a bit of cheese from the closet and went out into the yard when the rats saw her they all ran back to the hole but she went up to it very softly and put the bacon and the cheese down by the opening where the rats could smell how good they were and then she whistled the lizard's call and stepped back a little way in a minute the old gray rat poked its nose out and looked about come you good rat said mabel i won't hurt you i'll bring you something to eat every morning after this so the three rats all crept out and made a fine meal of the bacon and cheese for these are the things that rats love better than anything else in the world as they ate they looked at mabel now and then and squeaked little squeaks which meant thank you in rat talk mabel watched them quite a long while and then grandma called her in to help dust the upstairs rooms grandma thought that mabel was already old enough to begin to learn how to take care of a house so twice a week she had her take a little dust cloth and a small broom and whisk around the rooms with them mabel loved to do this and she rubbed the backs of the chairs and polished the tables until there wasn't a speck of dust to be seen and with her broom she swept away any spiders' webs that she could find in the corners of the wall she had a great deal of trouble with the spiders' webs because there were four brown spiders that lived in the house and they were not satisfied with having the garret to themselves where nobody disturbed them but used to come down in the bedrooms and spin cobwebs whenever they could mabel always brushed these down and so the four brown spiders hated her and would have liked to do her some harm if they could on this particular morning mabel found four spiders as webs in grandma's bedroom for each of the brown spiders had spun one during the night and she swept them all down with her broom the four spiders were very angry at this and as they sat in the garret they talked about it to each other and declared that if they ever had a chance they would get even with her for they were very bad spiders 
that afternoon about three o'clock grandma had to take walter to the town for a pair of new shoes and it was thursday jane was to be out so grandma left mabel at home to look after the house i'll be back in about two hours said grandma i may want to make a call or two on the way home when she had gone mabel played in the nursery for a while but it was so warm in the house that soon she went out into the yard and sat down under the big tree on the lawn it was a sultry summer afternoon the sun was very hot and there was scarcely a breath of air the bees hummed in the flower beds the locusts made a lazy sound in the branches overhead and everything seemed drowsy the shade of the tree was so pleasant and the grass was so soft that little by little mabel felt her blue eyes closing and her head nodding gradually she leaned further and further back until she had stretched herself on the grass and in a few minutes she was sound asleep the four brown spiders were sitting up in the garret window looking out into the yard and watching mabel when she went to sleep they all knew it ha said the first spider there she is now sound asleep and it's going to rain too she'll get wet sure enough a great black cloud was coming up from the south and was spreading slowly over the whole sky as the spiders spoke a low rumble of thunder was heard i hope she will said the second spider i hope she'll get soaking wet and i shouldn't be sorry if the lightning struck her nor i said the third spider only it won't why can't we do something ourselves she's asleep and wouldn't see us coming let's all go down and bite her hand no no said the fourth spider who was older than the others and knew a great deal that wouldn't be safe because she'd wake right up before we could get away and then she'd see us and step on us no no but there's something we could do we could tie her up tight in a cobweb so that she couldn't get up and when the rain came it would pour all over her and wet her to her bones and give her a bad cold so that she'd have to stay in bed and then we could go all over the house and spin webs wherever we like pooh said the first spider that's all nonsense we couldn't spin any webs big enough to hold her down she'd break them in a jiffy of course we couldn't answered the fourth spider but i know who could who cried the other three spiders all together why the king spider of course don't you know he's so big that he can spin webs as thick as packing thread and that a little girl like that couldn't break them good good cried all the spiders clapping their claws that's a splendid idea you know where the king spider lives do you come on and we'll get him to do it for us so they slid off the sill of the garret window and crept swiftly down through the house till they reached the yard the fourth spider led the way past mabel past the barn out into the orchard and then over a stone wall into the open field beyond it was a large lonely field full of bushes and small scrubby trees and was near to the woods where the good wolf lived this is the king spider's field said the fourth spider he owns it all then he led them to one corner of the field where there was a dense mass of thick-leaved weeds and wild plants there under a huge burdock leaf that spread out like a green umbrella sat the great king spider he was an enormous creature with a body as big as a footstool and legs as long as a pike staff he had monstrous claws and a mouth like an oyster but he looked rather good-natured as he sat there in the shadow of his leaf eating a large blue bottle fly the four brown spiders walked slowly up to him they were very bashful for they had never spoken to a king spider before and only the fourth spider had even so much as seen him what do you want asked the king spider the four spiders hardly knew how to begin they nudged each other and shifted around on their legs finally the fourth spider started in as well as he could o king of all spiders he said we have come to ask your help a girl has been very cruel to us she has broken our webs and driven us out of many pleasant places with brooms and she is a dangerous and dreadful creature now she lies asleep under a tree and we ask your help to punish her come o king of all the spiders and spin around her a web as strong as packing thread so that she cannot get up again when she wakes but may lie there and think about the wicked things that she has done to us the four brown spiders the king spider swallowed the left foreleg of the blue bottle fly and then coughed slightly i don't like to meddle with human beings he said but i suppose you don't mean to do her any great harm no o king said the fourth spider we are too weak to do her harm but we ask you to help us punish her so that she may fear the spiders hereafter and not do wrong to them or to their webs if i help you 
said the king spider you must reward me for this is the law of the spiders yes o king said the fourth spider what shall we do to please you you must each of you bring me every day for a week a live fly said the king spider thoughtfully a fat fresh fly that has been fed in a house only for this will i give you any help we promise said all of the spiders every day for a week we will bring each of us a live fly fat fresh and fed in a house we promise this cross your hearts said the king spider and they all four crossed their hearts then the king spider came out from his shady nook and the four spiders showed him the way through the orchard into the yard where mabel still lay very sound asleep under the big tree there she is said the four spiders good said the king spider he went up to her and began to spin first he spun a great web around her feet back and forth round and round strong and fast a web as thick as packing thread then he spun a web about her legs then about her arms and then around her neck when it was done he fastened the ends to the trunks of the tree and to the limbs overhead it was a strong stout web and he made it tight and firm the four spiders watched him wondering at the size of the threads and at the quick way in which he worked some of the barn spiders also came out and looked on there said the king spider it's done we thank you o king said the four spiders bowing and we will remember our promise then the king spider left them and went back to his home under the burdock leaf the four spiders hurried into the house and up to the garret window to watch for the storm was coming and they were afraid of getting wet in fact by this time the sky was black as ink and the lightning was beginning to flash before long the storm would burst upon the yard louder and louder the thunder began to roll and a strong wind made the leaves in the trees rustle suddenly as the storm came nearer a great crash of thunder pealed out like a roar of a cannon it was so loud that it waked mabel and she opened her eyes oh she said i've been asleep dear me it's going to rain i must go into the house she tried to lift her head but it was fastened tight to the ground she could not stir it she tried to put her hand up to her head to feel what it was that held her down but she could not even move her fingers she tried to pull her little legs up but they too seemed to have grown fast to the ground a dreadful feeling of helplessness came over her she was terribly frightened oh dear oh dear she cried what has happened to me i feel as though i were fastened down a fiery streak of lightning blazed across the sky like the red tongue of a wild beast and soon after came a crash of thunder that shook the very earth mabel screamed with terror help help she cried oh help grandma and walter and jane were not there to hear her but one little friend of hers was near by the gray rat under the pump was just poking its nose out of the hole to get a whiff of the cool breeze when mabel's cry for help came to its ears what's that said the gray rat help help called mabel why it's mabel said the gray rat it ran quickly out from under the pump and looked around there lay mabel under the tree crying and calling as loud as she could the gray rat ran up to her and in a minute saw that she was fastened down help help called mabel i'm here said the gray rat standing by her face i'll help you the rat rushed at the thick spider webs and took them in its mouth its teeth were as sharp as little knives snip 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 and the web around mabel's neck was cut she lifted up her head why she cried it's you yes said the rat rushing at the web around her waist hurry cried mabel the thunder crashed again the wind roared in the treetops the rat worked like a beaver snip 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 the web around mabel's waist gave way then the web around her legs and last of all the web around her feet done said the gray rat now up and run mabel rose quickly to her feet and made a dash for the house the gray rat ran swiftly down the hole under the pump scarcely were they both under cover when a terrific blaze of lightning hissed across the sky a fearful crash of thunder bellowed and a torrent of rain came swishing down like a cataract five minutes later grandma and walter rushed in at the front door streaming with water they had been caught in the rain oh mabel cried grandma what an awful rain why what's the matter you look so strange your eyes as big as tea plates grandma said mabel and her voice trembled a very strange thing happened to me while you were away 
I fell asleep under the tree in the yard, and when I woke up, I was fastened tight to the ground by threads. I couldn't get up, and if the grave rat from under the pump hadn't come and bitten the threads, I should have been kept there in all this rain. Grandma smiled. Well, Mabel, she said, you've evidently been dreaming. But just at that moment, she caught sight of something on Mabel's dress. What's this? she said as she picked it off. It was a great knot of spiders' as webs as thick as a packing thread. And here's more, she cried, looking at Mabel's feet. Last of all, she found a big web on Mabel's neck. Spiders, she said, and then stopped. She did not talk about it any more. But all that day, she had a very curious look on her face. The next morning, she took a broom and went over the whole house hunting for spiders. She even went into the garret, and there she found the four brown spiders sitting on the window sill. When they saw her coming, they slid out of the window and down the side of the house. They knew that they could never come back again. They went to the barn and tried to make a home for themselves. But the barn spiders, who were big and fierce, drove them out. So after that, they had to live in the orchard, where they were often rained on and got very little to eat. They could not pay the king's spider the flies they had promised him. So that one day when he saw them, he caught them in his big claws and ate them all up. End of chapter 7